and the hat, a clipped, very kind of military mustache, and simply being correct. Fred had theories. He shared them with his kids. Donald especially liked one of them. Uh, this is a very deep part of the Trump story. The family subscribes to a racehorse theory of human development, that they believe that there are superior people and that if you put together the genes of a superior woman and a superior man, you get a superior offspring. Fred's other theory, life was a competition. There were winners and there were losers. He called the winners killers. The way the game got played in his household was, if you did not win, you lost. And losing was you got crushed. Losing was you didn't matter. Losing was you were nothing. Donald took the lessons to heart, always tried to be the winner. But he was also a handful. His brother, Robert, who's very discreet, told me that Donald was always the kid in the family who would start throwing birthday cake at all the parties, that you would build up a tower of blocks, he would come knock your blocks down. This is the person he's been, I think, since he was five years old. Donald told me that he is essentially the person he was in first grade, and that he hasn't really changed. His self-definition was built around the idea that he was one tough son of a bitch. That meant in classrooms, that meant with teachers, that meant with his father. By the seventh grade, even Fred had had it with Donald's mischief. He sent him up the Hudson River, just a few miles from West Point, to the toughest boarding school he could find, the New York Military Academy. 